It's January of 2022. At that time, Federico Chiesa established himself as one of the best players in the world. But a game ruined everything. Two and a half years later from that game, Chiesa doesn't belong amongst the best players in the world anymore, and he's now joining Liverpool for 12 million, the same club that offered more than 100 million to sign him in the summer of 2021. After Chiesa had several issues with the club where he shined the most, Juventus. But we'll get to that later. Let's speak about the game that ended him. Good ball to Paolo Dybala. Brilliant from Juventus. Mkhitaryan now. Here's a chance for Rovrich deflected. And they have an early lead in the second half. Pellegrini goes for goal. A strike worthy of Francesco Totti himself. Juventus were down two goals. But they were desperate for a win as this was a key game to get a Champions League spot for the following season. As soon as the clock ticked the minute 70 of the game, the Juventus players became unstoppable. Morata's ball in! And Locatelli gets one back! Finally a moment of quality from Juventus! Kulosevsky! What a story at the Olimpico! This is Mattia De Chignon! His previous goal in Serie A, November 2017, more than four years on. This game was definitely one of the most entertaining matches in Italian football in the last few years. But when speaking about it, many people tend to forget about this. Stavo per calciare, mi entra Smalling e sento una fitta pazzesca al ginocchio. Vado a terra e sento proprio il ginocchio che mi si spegne. In quel momento entra in campo il dottore. La prima cosa appena lo vedo, Doc, io mi sento più il ginocchio. After this tackle though, Chiesa tried to keep playing. But after a couple minutes, this is what happened. Appena ho messo il piede in campo, io sentivo stock. A ogni passo sentivo stock. 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 Primo cambio di direzione ho sentito proprio stock ma forte. Ci ho sentito proprio come come se il ginocchio uscisse dall'articolazione. Chiesa was then subbed off and he quickly realized he tore his ACL, the worst injury a footballer could ever face. Right before getting surgery in Innsbruck, Chiesa said to himself, a bad time is coming. Well, turns out it wasn't the first time for him to experience something as negative as this in his life. many would believe Chiesa had a very easy rise to the top in football, knowing his family roots. And what about that for a finish? The tightest of angles for Enrico Chiesa. But he's made it 4-2 nevertheless, squeezing it home past Jerumu. His dad Enrico cemented his legacy as one of the most underrated players in Italy. My father was a great champion. I was able to look at some of his videos on YouTube to see come fa a calciare e mettere la sette da fermo. Di destra e di sinistra ho detto, va, fammi vedere, perché lui che sta casa non te lo dice, è quasi un suo segreto, no? Come... Enrico Chiesa played for notable clubs in Italy, such as Sampdoria, Fiorentina, Lazio, and especially Parma. He married Francesca, who gave birth to Federico Chiesa in 1997. Federico grew up with a strong passion for the game until he was 13 years old, where he thought about quitting. He stated in an interview, in the youth teams, my career was a bit complicated. At 13 years old, I was seeing my teammates grow both physically and technically, while I was struggling to keep up. I had to start playing with 12-year-olds to play some more. It was so tough and I thought about quitting, but thanks to my determination and the support of my parents and of my coach, who made me grow as a person, I started considering the daily training as an actual game and I didn't quit anymore. Chiesa had a Serie A debut with Fiorentina, in August of 2016, against Juventus. His rise was quick, and he had some notable moments like his first hat-trick against Roma. 
Chiesa turned himself into one of the most promising youngsters of Italian football, and he finally got eyes of big clubs on him. And in fact, this is what happened in October of 2020. E sono veramente orgoglioso di vestire questa maglia e di scendere in campo per questa società veramente prestigiosa. But this transfer would get a lot of backlash, as many believed Chiesa was overhyped. I just don't see where he plays. I don't see how he fits into the lineup for something that Juventus don't have. In my opinion, Juventus just keep buying the same type of players that they already have. They got Kulusevski, Morata, Chiesa, Ronaldo, Dybala. And they don't even know where to play the guys. While the Fiorentina fans started to hate their wonder boy. And that's because of a decades-long rivalry between Fiorentina and Juventus. Given the fact that Fiorentina is the smaller club, Juventus would always buy their best players. This created a lot of bad blood between Fiorentina fans and Chiesa. But as Chiesa lost the love of his first fan base, he gained the love of millions of fans after having countless amazing performances. He scored this as his first Serie A goal with Juventus. Sulla tre quarti che recupera un buon pallone, Chiesa. Limite, Chiesa si sposta Ronaldo per dargli il tiro. Chiesa! He had an impeccable game against the Milan side that was unbeaten for almost 30 games. And he had some other great moments as well. But it was this match to confirm that he was an elite player. Ed in campo c'è la Juventus, opposta al Porto, il Porto che nella partita d'andata a Odragao ha vinto per 2-1, una partita strana, rimessa in piedi dal gol in estremis di Federico Chiesa, l'uomo forse in questo momento della provvidenza bianconera, l'uomo che tiene in piedi la squadra campione d'Italia in questo che è il massimo trofeo continentale, l'uomo. This game was the second leg of the Champions League round of 16 game between Juventus and Porto. In the first leg, Porto won 2-1 with Chiesa scoring the only goal for Juventus in the 82nd minute. Juventus desperately needed to turn things around. But the Italians aren't off to a great start. Things started to get tough, and Juventus needed three goals to get past Porto. At halftime, this was the situation in the dressing room. The tension was palpable. Something needed to happen. Forwards. Ronaldo's touch. Chiesa's shot. There's the goal. Chiesa equalized the score and gave Juventus hope. A couple minutes after that, Porto striker Teremi was sent off. Porto was down one man. This was Juventus's moment. Chiesa had now equalized the score in aggregates as well. But after this goal, the game stalled and it eventually got to extra time, where Porto's Sergio Oliveira scored another goal. Juventus scored a third goal, but it wasn't enough as they needed another one, which they weren't able to score. The game ended on the score of 3-2 for Juventus, with the Italian side being knocked out. Chiesa's performance, however, will never be forgotten. Chiesa was one of the only players to actually do well in this season for Juventus. In fact, Juventus ended up qualifying with a razor-thin margin over Napoli for the Champions League of the upcoming year. No one was expecting what was coming from Chiesa in summer, though. After his incredible season with Juventus, Chiesa was called up with Italy to play Euro 2020. Everyone was counting Italy out thinking there was no way for them to win it all. 
Belgium or France? Or maybe gone Belgium. France. France. Oh, my head will go to go with France and behind straight after I have to go with my second one. People didn't expect them to top their group. <laughs> Explodes that for you guys. All right, so to be fair, I, I think there'll be a shock winner in this group. I think Turkey can top this group. I see Turkey winning. It. Turkey, bro! I see Turkey winning. Italy, though, was actually on an extremely long unbeaten streak and had a pretty solid team. And on top of that, they had something no other team had an incredible bond between each player. I'll show you later why. Italy faced Switzerland and Turkey in their first two games. Both won comfortably 3-0. But the thing is, Chiesa didn't start in either of those games. He's this guy's substitute. Berardi is Sassuolo's right winger, and he was coming off of a season where he scored 25 goal contributions in 30 games. Unlike Chiesa, he didn't rely on his pace and dribbling, but much more on his finishing and on his technique. There was already a debate on who would have started for Italy between the two. But Adi, I'm not too fussy about, you know, so, but I would like to see Chiesa come in. I know he could play on that right wing. So let's give him a chance, see what he does. When he, when he played against Wales, I mean, he dribbles his man. Yes. Every yes. single time. His dribbling skills yeah. are second to none. And about Wales, they were the last team Italy had to face in the group stages. And since Italy had already qualified for the round of 16, Mancini, Italy's coach, decided to start Chiesa. You might be wondering what happened next. Here's your answer. Italy won the game 1-0, and Chiesa had an incredible performance. He looked unstoppable on the pitch and was always dribbling past his opponents. But all of this still wasn't enough to become a starter for Italy. Italy were facing Austria in the round of 16. Berardi started over Chiesa once again. The game kept going, but Italy couldn't find any opening. The match felt stuck until this moment. Lining with the cross, Adebos coming in with the header. He's looping and it's turned in by Look at oh. this, look at this, look at this. What did I say? No. No. Dai ragazzi, c'era un fallo clamoroso prima di stazione. Italy were blessed as the goal was disallowed, but something needed to change, so Chiesa was subbed on for Berardi. The game went to extra time, and at minute 95, Spinazzola, it's opened up here for Chiesa, still Chiesa! Italy then scored the second goal and won the game 2-1. This win made them get to the quarterfinals of the competition, where they would face Belgium, a game Italy won 2-1. Italy was now in the semi-finals, where they would face Spain, and historically, Spain had always been a tough opponent for Italy. The Euro 2012 final is unforgettable. Spain crushed Italy with a humiliating 4-0, but this time it was different. Italy was living its best moment in years and had massive momentum, while Spain was in a weird spot. Despite all of this, Spain probably gave Italy the toughest game out of all of the teams at the Euros, with Italy's goalkeeper Donnarumma having to put on an impeccable performance to not let Spain score. And then at minute 60... Cross comes Laporte with a covering challenge. Still an opportunity for Chiesa! It's really Chiesa scored the most important goal of his career that night. On TikTok, everyone started posting edits of this goal with a song that we can't play due to copyright reasons. At that point, Chiesa had the world at his feet. He was unstoppable. But the match didn't end there. 
There were still 30 minutes to go, and in fact, at minute 80, Murata scored and tied the game. The match would go to extra time, where Chiesa was subbed off. And after an extremely complicated game where both sides weren't able to score another goal, the game would have had to be decided on penalties. Both Italy and Spain missed their first penalty, and they both scored their second and third penalty. It was time for the fourth penalty. Italy was shooting first. Bernardeschi was their penalty shooter. Then, it was Spain's turn. Morata was ready to shoot. Italy was now winning 3-2, and with their fifth and final penalty, they had the chance to win the game. Italy got to the final in spectacular fashion, and Chiesa won another MVP award. He was clearly the star of the Euros. In the final, Italy had to face England. Both teams had their confidence through the roof. Italy stayed humble though, while England's confidence turned into arrogance. One thing was guaranteed. This game was gonna be a war. It was proven by the fact that England scored very quickly at the second minute. Italy managed to keep it together and eventually equalized at minute 67. Chiesa had another great game, but didn't score or assist. He was subbed off at minute 86. The game would go on penalties where Sancho and Rashford both missed for England. And just like in the game against Spain, Jorginho had the chance to score the final penalty and bring the trophy home. Three best here. Otherwise, it's Italy's cup. It's Jorginho! It's but Pickford shut down Italy's dreams. Just for a moment though, because Italy had to score another penalty to not lose the game. And this time, Saka was shooting. It was the greatest moment in years for Italian football, and Chiesa was one of the main stars of the team. He had the world at his feet, but that didn't last for long. It was time for the new season to start, and there were some big changes at Juventus. Since Pirlo, the manager who made Chiesa have incredible success in his first season at Juve, had been sacked. Allegri had to replace him, and Allegri is known for his extremely defensive tactics, which don't make his attackers shine much. Chiesa had to prove that all of this was wrong, since he was now considered one of the stars of the team, together with Dybala and Ronaldo. Well, speaking about Ronaldo, he decided to leave just a few days before transfer window ended. Ieri, parlando con Cristiano, mi ha comunicato che non ha intenzione di rimanere alla Juventus ed è per questo che domani non sarà convocato. Things were not looking promising as Juventus tied against Udinese and lost to Empoli. Those were both games Juve had to win. The season kept progressing until the game that left a mark on Chiesa for the rest of his career, Roma Juventus. Before that game, there weren't many remarkable moments in Chiesa's season. The only thing to be remembered was his goal against Chelsea. Other than that, Chiesa only kept getting injured and scored the small amount of four goals and three assists in 17 games. Fans started blaming Allegri for Chiesa's underperformance. And again, Federico Chiesa, there's, you know that meme, the meme from The Godfather where it's like, look how they massacred my boy? That's, mm. that's Federico Chiesa. 
After the injury against Roma, he had to stay away from the pitch for the rest of the season. This injury would not only make him come back in December of 2022, but it would weaken two of Chiesa's biggest traits, his pace and explosiveness. Chiesa had to rely much more on his technique after coming back, and in fact, you could feel he is visibly struggling, still to this day. Over the last two seasons, Chiesa scored only 14 goals and 9 assists in 70 games. That's numbers he would get in one season only. At the end of last season, Allegri was sacked. People believed the situation would change with the new manager for Chiesa, but when the new manager came, he announced Chiesa had to leave the team because he was not part of the project. Chiesa had to wait the entire summer to find a team that would buy him. And finally, just a couple days before deadline day, Liverpool signed him for the incredibly small fee of 12 million pounds. Now the question is the following, is he going to get back to the highest level in England? We're going to see, and I also wish that to happen to him, because he was a very exciting player to watch in his prime. Oh, and speaking about England, we also made a video about why they always struggle to win trophies. Check it out.